it's time to feel good about the Dirac delta function, and we do this here with the Gaussian. Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, here is our Gaussian centered on x equals zero, where the mean is zero. Here is our variance, sigma squared. Sigma is the standard deviation. And we're going to do uh, the simplification that we found on Wikipedia here because they have some graphs where they uh, combined the two and the sigma squared and called it a squared. So we'll do that here. And we'll assign this to a delta function with the subscript a, which means that we have a family of functions that will look more and more like the delta function when a goes to zero. See, a goes to zero means that a squared will go to zero and dividing by a small number means you have a big number here. e to the minus big number is essentially zero. So that's your spread, that's your width of your Gaussian and as a gets smaller the width will get smaller because you have to be at x equals zero to, to get an appreciable result. Otherwise you have e to the minus some big number. And then since a is getting smaller one over a gets bigger and bigger so that means you get taller. Let's see how this works. From Wikipedia we have these three graphs where a is one and gets smaller one-fifth and then a is one-tenth and you can see the two things working here for us. The dispersion decreases so we have a narrow graph here, a more narrow. The standard deviation is getting smaller and smaller and since we're dividing by the a in the normalization constant we get a taller and taller peak, which is neat because, see, the area under the graph must be one. So if you make this thing more narrow, hey, you have to be taller to get that same area. So that's very, very nice. And this is approaching the Dirac delta function. And now we have a good function. It's continuous. You can take a derivative of this function. So we feel better about what the Dirac delta function is. So we write in the limit, in the limit as a goes to zero, that's our Dirac delta function. Or we could keep the Gaussian in our original form and simply let the standard deviation go to zero and get the same result. What I would like to do last is give you an integral form for the Dirac delta function. So the Dirac delta function is the limit of this Gaussian as sigma goes to zero. So let's look at this uh, function for a second. And an integral that we did earlier in our course, way back the first week, we did this integral and I would like to use this integral to arrive at an integral form for the delta function but I want to have x squared over here on the right so I'm going to swap k and x variables here so that x becomes k, k becomes x, k and x swap gives the same thing here and then x becomes k. So this is the integral from our integral table of integrals that we worked out. And to make the uh, right side agree with our delta sequence Gaussian, I need to make four alpha equal to two sigma squared. That's my first step. So let's do that. So we come down here and we make the assignment four alpha is two sigma squared and therefore the four alpha here becomes two sigma squared which is what I need and notice the alpha down in here will become sigma squared over two and by flipping the alpha since we're dividing we get the two up with the pi and the sigma squared in the denominator that's looking very close to what we need we unfortunately have to have the 2 pi down in here, but we can fix that easily by multiplying both sides by 1 over 2 pi. That will bring the square root of 2 pi down inside here in the denominator. So when we do that, we will have precisely the form of the Gaussian in our delta sequence of Gaussians and this is the integral form. I wanted to express this as an integral and by taking the sigma, sigma to go to zero, then I have my delta function, direct delta function, by taking sigma to zero, the sigma goes away, I have e here with a zero up there, so I simply have this. So this is the integral form for the direct delta function and when you look at that it looks pretty strange. Uh, 
if you hadn't seen this sequence idea, this would be of some concern because if you were to take this integral, you would get 1 over ix here e to the i kx since we're taking the integral with respect to k. Uh, then we treat the i and the x as a constant. And if you try to integrate this uh, at and, and put the limits in to get the result, you find that e to the i kx by Euler is a cosine and a sine, and you can't pin these functions down at infinity. What is this? This is oscillating. This is wiggling up and down. They're wiggling up and down. What is the sine of infinity? Not defined. So this is problematic. However, if you remember that really what we mean here when we write this is back up a step, we mean that there is a well-defined Gaussian up in here and if the sigma is very very small you have a very thin tall function and in the limit as we take sigma to zero we get this result. So just remember this means that we're doing something like this and that gives it the meaning. The direct delta function as an integral, the integral representation of the Dirac delta function, very important in theoretical physics.